Hi, and uh, welcome to GTC. Uh, it's my pleasure to present this uh, solution based on the HP ProLiant uh, server, along with uh, the NoviMind uh, software. So uh, we'll be talking with also Ren Wu, who is the NoviMind founder. And uh, it's my pleasure to work with uh, Ren on this, uh, on this solution. Uh, the solution we will be presenting today is we'll try to address a few problems. Um, first, um, not each customer has um, uh, the same issues or the same cluster or only one workload. So first, we want it to be flexible, uh, to be more agile, to adapt uh, what we provide to customers. So some customer will require just a small server, a two GPU, but some other will need four, eight GPU servers, and then you, you need to stack them. So first point is how we can be flexible. Then it's easy. Um, some customers are already, are already up to speed on deep learning, and they need to something which makes sense and very quickly uh, scale on the cluster. But some others are still in the investigation phase. In this case, they need a user interface to pre-process the data, to select what framework, what network you will apply to the data, and then launch the job. You don't want to care about how do I have an efficient job running on my system. So that's the easy part. Efficient, because that's our HPC background. When we do something on a machine, it must be efficient, or we are losing time and money, so we want for our customer to be efficient when we are running. And then scalable, because right now, we, I would say that deep learning is starting with the data we have, but very quickly, the size of the data and the problem will grow very quickly, and scale out is one of the best solution. So let's start with the flexible part. Uh, flexible is how we can be agile with customer to deliver um, an optimal solution. So with uh, HPE, we have a, a, a broad range of uh, GPU server. The one I pick up here are really the one optimized for GPU computing and deep learning. So it goes from this uh, very big guy, which is the liquid, liquid, liquid cool, uh, aiming to do the, uh, the exascale uh, range of uh, problem down to uh, a very small box here, which is uh, a very small server running uh, NVIDIA P4, mainly designed for inference. So we have a, one of the broadest portfolio with uh, a two GPU, four GPU, eight GPU systems uh, able to match all the needs uh, that you can encounter. And, yep, um, here uh, we're showing that um, we, I only put the, the latest card, the, the ones that make sense for deep learning right now. Uh, so we already support the V100 on our server, and you can, you can order straight away <laughs> the, the new system. And so we do support the, the P100 and V100 either in the PCI Express version, but also in the SXM2 version. Um, so you're able to take two, four, eight GPUs, uh, and you will get the optimal topology. Because having GPUs in the machine, it's good. You will do compute very efficiently, but we will see later on that it's not the only point. The point is you need to go in a cluster and you need to work efficiently. And then, in this case, you need to rely on the latest, uh, uh, it's not the latest technology because GPU Direct was here since uh, 2012, but it, it's getting used very efficiently now. It's all about bandwidth because we are looking at the workload on the machine, but we will aggregate nodes together, and it's, everything is just bandwidth. Here, 
I would say I don't like these numbers because it is kind of marketing numbers. Here, the NVLink on the P100, the 80 megabyte, it's, there is a, a mistake, the 80 gigabyte per second, it's, uh, it's uh, just an aggregated bandwidth. When you're running a P100, it, it has four link with each uh, 20 gigabyte. But when two GPU are talking, maximum you have two links available. So it's 40 gigabyte for the communication. The V100 has six link and two can be used together between two GPU at the maximum. So it's 50 gigabyte. And then when we look at here, the PCI, it's just 16 gigabyte. And what we can see here is going outside of the machine when you go, when you try to communicate between nodes, then with uh, GPU RDMA, you got around 10 gigabyte per second. This is what we tested here. Uh, we are testing both um, Intel OPA and uh, Melanox EDR. So that's the current generation, the current generation on the uh, 100 uh, gigabyte, gigabit per second. And as you can see, we are almost saturating the interconnect with both technology. Uh, this is what is important in this slide is you have to understand that it is between two GPUs in two different nodes and the test is made from one GPU memory to another GPU memory. So you're getting the 10 gigabyte between these two uh, GPU memory on two different hosts. So that's the way we scale out uh, our system. Topology does matter. It is important because if we want to have an efficient system, we need to build it efficiently from scratch. So the topology is important. What we wanted to show here is that um, we have two kind of issues. We have uh, two kind of workload. We are doing compute within the system and we are exchanging data. Uh, so within the system here, we are doing either the PCI Expressway or the NVLink. As I said earlier here, you can see that these two GPU will use only two NVLink, which is the 40 gigabyte on the P100 and 50 gigabyte on the V100 because the speed has been increased between these, these two GPUs. And our system, the current system, the Apollo 6500 running eight GPUs can be defined in two different combination, com configuration. It's either four GPU connected to one CPU socket going outside with a one interconnect or it's the whole eight GPUs connected to the same CPU socket. In this case, in fact, you will be relying here on, uh, on a PCI switch to have a better uh, communication within these four guys here. So it's a, all the time we have a PCI switch to uh, optimize the communication before going out. So depending on the workload, depending on what you will try to solve, some architecture could make more sense. And I think this is what you can see in the next presentation with my colleague with the deep learning cookbook because we have made a huge number of benchmark based on different um, program, different framework, different hardware architecture. And it will show you that uh, we've been um, able to uh, to provide the optimal solution depending on the, the, the uh, incoming data. Easy. So as I said earlier, um, depending on the, the, the user level, uh, you may need some help just to get the data pre-processed, uh, select the right framework, and then launch the job at the beginning, you don't want to care about uh, do I need uh, to pin this to this GPU or whatsoever. You just want to have it done and you want to have it done efficiently. So 
thanks to the Novimind user interface, uh, we are able to give, I would say, uh, investigation users a way to have a very quick warm up, get up to speed and start to get results very quickly. But on the other side, for more experienced user, we are already ready to scale just by launching the job on very large scale cluster. So the user interface is really designed to help user going through the workflow. And you don't care if you have to run your job on one GPU, two GPU, and if the technology underneath rely on one, C one server or 10 servers, the user interface will select this for you. Uh, in fact, when you prepare the job, you can say that uh, how many GPU you will use and how many core, the CPU core per GPU you will allocate just to make sure that the load of the GPU is still uh, efficient. So the user interface will help you to go through this framework if you need. If you don't need, then it will just, uh, it's not necessary. <coughs> so the platform, the, the platform underneath handle all the, the work for you and you don't have to worry of uh, what's going on. And it's scalable because you can have as many as instances as you need. And as usually, when you launch something, you want to monitor if your job is running efficiently. As I said, as an HPC background, uh, if the machine is not 100% used, it's, uh, it's a waste of time, waste of money. So you definitely want to monitor that the GPU usage here is straight at, uh, at the top. Efficient, yes. Um, so as I said, it's, uh, it's the whole picture and we need to have from the hardware uh, design, the topology and the software, everything needs to be aligned because you don't want to have one component slowing down the whole process. So we're using the latest NVIDIA GPU right now and based on the, the software stack, uh, QDNN will give us the optimal um, tweaks for the GPU you will, we will be using for the compute part while NCCL will help us inside the machine to have the optimal communication. Uh, GPU RDMA was the key element, really, to have uh, a really efficient job on the scale-out server. And last, which is done underneath by the Novimind software, is all the NUMA optimization and the GPU-CPU pinning, just to make sure that the communication always take the optimal path and you don't have any bottleneck here. Next is uh, when you start investigating deep learning, you may face some question. And what parameter do I need to, to, to tune in my uh, network? How I will get the, uh, the best accuracy with the, the optimal time? And based on uh, Novimind experience, we already have this information. We have all these uh, presets, all these tuned parameters uh, targeting different verticals. So this, this experience will help you to be more efficient and more quickly uh, you will get results. Last point is, the, the main point is scalable because what we wanted to do is we wanted to demonstrate that when the data will grow, uh, the whole infrastructure needs to be able to handle this big data and to provide an efficient processing. So scale out with the Novimind software. Uh, Ren, if I may leave you presenting your company. So if you're great. Uh, thank you so much.
Um, can you this one? Yeah, I can just stand here. That's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, Novo Mai is a uh, startup uh, focused offering the uh, core AI technologies. We like to think we are a big company. In other words, we like to work with the uh, industry leaders. Um, for example, HP, so that we'll be able to focus on the little bit of the core technologies and use that technology to help big ones like HP to really serve uh, their uh, customers better. Um, the company, in other words, the level of my, I think the uniqueness comes to, uh, we do offer the full stack AI technologies. And here, uh, we focus on the uh, training side, but we also have the uh, uh, inference uh, engine so that we'll be, to be able to do the inference uh, very well. Yeah, so the uh, um, software, just like Bro had mentioned, is designed so that we can meet the four goals simultaneously. That is really um, very efficient in the target hardware, especially, for example, HP hardware. And the uh, stack has to be scalable because from what we see, um, all the work that Bro also pointed out, we have more data, so we will facing, everybody will facing the scalability issues and we want to solve that before that become a massive problem. Uh, of course, easy to deploy, easy to, to get into the deep learning, that is also a lot of design go. Uh, flexible, we will really be able to use, uh, put the software on different kind of hardware topology and still be able to get, uh, you know, efficient, scalable, easy, satisfying that's um, conditions. That's it, thank you very much. <laughs> so now, uh we have been running at, uh, our system, and as you can see, it scaled pretty well. So whenever we increase the number of GPUs, the scalability goes what, to what we expect because the GPU RDMA is really helping us to lower the communication while we keep the workload more efficient within the, the machine. So um, the system is able to deliver really good results on uh, all the networks so far. And as you can see, we have been scaling to 64 GPUs, yet whereas uh, a very uh, good scalability. Uh, it's, it's linear because uh, the, the GPU RDMA underneath is helping us to make it work very efficiently. <laughs> 